Okay, now in number nine, we're going to change our alignment and format some numbers, play some borders, and then indent. Indent just like you would the first line of a paragraph. So the first range we're going to select, we're going to click on D4 to activate the cell. And then make sure your mouse pointer is the white cross. And when it is, let me just minimize this a little bit, we're going to highlight over to column F and pull it down to the last row, which is 39. So all three of those columns should be selected. And I'll just kind of zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about. So you want those three columns there. And then we're going to make sure we're on the home tab. And this button right here, when you pause for a second, you will get the name. And this is the center button. And it centers the text in those three columns. Now it wants us to go to G4. We're going to click on that to activate it. Then make sure you have a white cross. And then you're going to highlight over to H and pull it down to the last row, which is 39. Once that's all selected, we're going to use this dollar symbol which is the accounting number format, and it will change its view. Now, when you get those pound signs, that just means there's not enough column width to accept all those characters, but that's okay. So um, I do believe at some point we're gonna auto adjust, and I'll just show you now. You can either highlight, and then when you change your mouse pointer, you can see when it changes to this bar with the, it's almost like a cross and it has some arrowheads. If you double click, that will auto adjust. If you didn't use that technique, if you click over G and H and you go to the format menu, you can see there's an auto fit column with here. It does the same thing. And you can see now all your numbers are visible. And if there's a, a dash, that just means there's no value. It's just, it's, it came out to zero. Okay, so now we're gonna select, so we're gonna go from a3 this time with your white mouse pointer over to J down to the last line which is 39 and on your home tab we're going to go over here to our border list and they want all borders. Now all borders are black and printable. These gray lines are called grid lines. They're just to help you understand and navigate into the different cells. All right now we're going to select um, so in 9G, we're just going to make sure we keep it selected after we apply these all borders. Once you're done that task, you're going to go ahead and apply the 12 point font size. And then we're going to go into column B and C, and we're going to start from row 4. So it would be B4 over to C down to row 39. And when we select that, they want us to use this indentation. If you notice above the word alignment, this command is increase indent, and they want us to click on this once. So when you do, you can see that it indents right here for both columns. So that's just like um, indenting for the first line of the paragraph. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and auto fit all our columns. So I'm just gonna highlight, and again, you can either double click here or you could go to the command option and auto fit. So it's going to auto fit to make sure that all the characters within that cell you can see those visibly without all this excess white space like that. Okay now we're going to go and we're going to center line the labels in row three so that means these are the labels. They label each column and we're going to center those. So that was number 9k. Now when we're moving over to number 10, number 10, we're going to go ahead and insert a column. So to do that, I'm just going to kind of increase this zoom so we can take a look. And if you just right click over column B and select insert, you can see it'll insert a new column. And we're going to type the title, the header, disk with a question mark. And then we're going to type out a pattern of no, no, and make sure that the N and the Y are capitalized. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to center these. And then we're going to use, we're going to convert our mouse pointer over that green square. And we're going to double click and it'll copy that sequence. No, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, no, yes. All the way down to the last line. It knows when to stop. So that's all your instructions um, for, oh, you know what? It looks like we're not going to center line it based on when you read your set of instructions. Let me just go ahead and correct this. You're not going to center align it. They're going to ask you to click on this increase indent twice. So one, two. 
and that will be the indentation for that actual column. All right, now we're going to go down below, and whenever we have these Excel files, they're considered workbooks, and you can see where my mouse pointer, this, this is one worksheet in the workbook. So you can add several. I think it's like up to 255 sheets per file per workbook. So if I double click on that, it will take this in editing mode and I can go ahead and rename that. So in number 11, it's asking you to rename the sheet tab and that's what we're doing now. I'm gonna type inventory and press enter and it will accept that change. So you can see now, and I'll make sure this is in frame, that we, I changed that worksheet here to the name of inventory. So that's number 11. Now number 12 is based on the page layout tab. Now this is just to get it prepared so when we send it out to the printer, you have certain things that are printable on a standard size piece of sheet. So I'm gonna to go to, there's two ways of um, inserting a, a footer or a noter. So I'm gonna show you, I'm sorry, a header or a footer. So I'm gonna show you this approach. Page layout tab, right underneath the print titles, we're gonna use our launcher button here in the corner. When we launch it, we're gonna go on a header footer tab. Now, it'll let us know that it wants, this particular assignment wants us to go to the footer. So I'm gonna click on custom footer button. So again, what I clicked on was this custom footer button. It opens up this dialog box. And it's going to tell you what section to go to. It wants us in the middle section here, so I'm going to click into this box, and it wants us to include the file name. Don't type out your file name. Just go use this button right here, which is Insert File Name, and you should have this appearance. And then when you select OK, you should be able to see the actual file name, how you named it down below here. And then you just select OK again. You're not going to see it in this view, but if you actually print it out or if you went to a print preview like this, you can see down here at the bottom where in the center in your footer it includes the, the file name. It's always important to use that button so you don't um, accidentally type any errors in your file name. All right, so you're going to do that. Um, it tells you to go back to the normal view, but if you use that approach, you're already in the normal view, and you could always go to the view, and then here's the different type of views, just how you're viewing it on your screen through your monitor. So if you're confused, just know this is the normal view. And then down here at the bottom, um, you can see there's shortcut buttons here, and the very first one is your normal view, the second one down is your page layout view, and the third one's your breakout view, and it's the same exact buttons here under the view tab. Okay, so back to the page layout tab, the other thing we want to do is when we're sending it out on a piece of paper, do we want the orientation portrait or landscape? For this particular assignment, you're going to assign it to landscape, so turn that on by clicking on it. And then we also have this scale too, because you may have many columns across your screen. Sometimes people have two monitors worth of Excel spreadsheet, but you say to yourself, well, I want to scale it down to fit on a piece of paper from how many pages to how many pages. And then for this particular exercise, you're going to set it for one width, for one page for the width, and then one page for the height. So that's your scale to fit option. And then lastly, um, it just asks you to click on the file and go to print, just so you can get a print preview of what it's gonna look like when it prints out. And then just make sure you return back to it and you click on save and then upload your project for grading.